Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the words of the Chavetz Chaim, Klal Hey, the fifth chapter here, and he writes like this. Vinayadkai, until this point in the Sefer. We presented you many matters where we're dealing with the topic of speech, of talking, Lashonara, slander that is certainly forbidden. And the halacha varies at different times depending on different circumstances where you're going to be considered to be speaking Lashon Hara, and sometimes we even spoke about the idea of Ta'elis, where if it's beneficial, maybe you could actually say certain things that in general would look like Lashon Hara. V'yata basifim halalu, and now, in the up-and-coming sifim, the up-and-coming pages, nidaber b'chelik ha-gadosh I want to discuss something that is much bigger, and is a much greater prohibition in the laws of Lashon Hara. Because what we're going to be speaking about over here, there's no way to judge the person who's saying Lashon Hara favorably. He's outright speaking Lashon Hara. Because certainly, as we're going to see, this person who's saying Lashon Hara has no, no intention of saying anything constructive or anything beneficial. There's no benefit that he's going to bring about. Rather, all he wants to do is speak negatively about his fellow Jew. And the Chavetz Chaim is going to introduce over here the concept of pointing out the shortcomings and the faults in another person when there's no other reason besides pointing out their negative traits. There's no te'elis, there's no benefit, you're not warning somebody from them, you are just wanting to disparage and put this person down, so you point out the negative traits that they have. This is this form of lashonara is found, unfortunately, many people trip up and stumble into this. However, of course, it's only because of people's lack of knowledge and understanding of how lashonara works. Therefore, says the Chavetz Chaim, I am mavakesh. I request of you. Don't be surprised by what I write. How I expound upon these cases. And I'm going to lay out every single detail explicitly for you to be able to understand. I'm doing this because I hope that maybe HaKadosh Baruch Hu will help. He'll remove some of this terrible stumbling block that exists in these areas. Because as I see it, says the Chavetz Chaim, many people are falling prey to the Lashon Har in this particular case. And therefore, I'm going to be very specific. I'm going to bring the, the case, cases out into the public so people will understand exactly what we're talking about. I'll begin by saying the following. It is also, it's prohibited to disparage and embarrass another person because of the shortcomings that they have, because of their own personal attributes. Whether it's with their wisdom, their intelligence, whether their strength, whether their wealth. The kol ki and any other thing that you would consider to be a shortcoming of theirs, if you mention it and you talk about it negatively and embarrass them, that's lashonar ve'afarish as devarai bechol apratim. Says the Chavetz Chaim, I'm going to explain my words, each one in detail. So here says the Chavetz Chaim, three categories that he's listing out by name, and it includes everything, and that is. If you're going to embarrass a person because of his intelligence, and you'll think to yourself, what's the big deal? I mean, that's the way that Hashem made him. Or somebody, their gvur, their strength. Listen, the guy is a puny little guy. What do you want from him? Or hey, Ba'isha, the person that has no riches. Hashem decided he's not going to be rich. Or anything that is similar, says the Chavetz Chaim, all of this is going to be considered Lashon Hara, and Be'ez Hashem tomorrow will begin explaining how the person speaks Lashon Hara and why it is Lashon Hara in these cases. Have a wonderful day.